Geronimo Stilton is one of the most beloved book series for all ages kids. I remember going to the library, checking out those books, just looking at the pictures, except reading all of them text, with their own fancy schmancy of their size, shape, and color. I mean, that's what kids love, right? Reading fancy words just to make it look fun and interesting. Yeah. And attracted to a few female characters, which gives you a suspicion that you might be a furry. Not that I am one of them. I think. But that's not important right now, because for the main topic of this video, I am going to rant a one book that I've read several times in the past, and never again to this very day. That's right, I'm talking about Quest for Paradise, The Return of Kingdom of Fantasy. This is the second book of Geronimo Stilton's Kingdom of Fantasy. Kingdom of Fantasy is a special book series, beside the original ones, that tells about his adventures in the world of Kingdom of Fantasy. So yeah, this is basically Geronimo Stilton isekai Didn't realize that until now. Last time I remember there were like seven or eight books, I think. I don't know how many there are now. I only read five of them, and I own three. I think I consider these as my favorite series of Geronimo Stilton, because it had the word fantasy, and I was the kind of guy who was into the fantasy genre. Quest for Paradise was the first ever book that I bought from Kingdom of Fantasy, but I didn't know it was the second book, so I ended up buying the first book, and then the third book. The first book followed through a simple and solid plot. He enters another world, was given a quest to save the queen, saves the queen, she thanks her, and then she sends him back home. Simple as that. Now here's the second book. Geronimo was sent back to the Kingdom of Fantasy. The queen asks him to find the map of paradise to find the heart of happiness. So he finds the map and goes all the way to these quests, along with his companions, I guess, but doesn't find the heart of happiness. Even when they reach the end of the map, they had to go back. However, he finds the Heart of Happiness at the Queen's Kingdom, which is the Land of Fairies, or is it Kingdom of Fairies? I don't know. Finds the Heart of Happiness and presents to the Queen herself. And what'd she do with it? She just puts it back. And then Jeromo is just genuinely confused, like, did she just lost her marbles? And then she answers him this. It's not about the destination, but the journey. That kind of bullshit. You're not wrong, Jeromo. She didn't just lose her marbles. She's a fucking moron. She asked you to get the map of paradise in the land of ogres that are way bigger than giants. I don't know, something like 30 stories high and that could easily crush you? He literally just risked his life getting that map. And for what? Gets promoted as the ambassador of happiness. Yeah, sure, go put a fucking sticker in your name tag. Looking all cute with rainbows and sunshine. See if you can make world peace with that pathetic title. He followed the map through this long and arduous journey to end up in a wild fucking goose chase. That the sole thing that he was looking for was the First, he ever landed in the Kingdom of Fantasy. Look, I understand that he has to get all those 30 keys just to unlock that door for the Heart of Happiness, all for 33 keys to a tiny ass 33 locks. That's a bit much. Here's Queen Blossom sitting on a stump. Then here's Geronimo presenting the heart to the queen at the exact same position. I'm confused to whether this is the queen or it's just a fucking statue. Not only that, but there's only a bunch of PNG fairies. That's the only difference. No fairies? Bunch of fairies that has been copy and pasted from another page. Such lazy, lazy design. Oh, don't get me started on his traveling companions, because they didn't do shit. All they do is just hang around. Nothing significant that is helpful to their journey. But there was that one scene where the dragon that they were riding was shot by a poison arrow, and they all fell. And from the info from Dragon of the Rainbow is that he sings while he talks. So, I don't know, I was just going through a painful singing voice. Like, have I been poisoned by an arrow? I know, terrible. But that's just how it was read. It literally said he sang out in pain. Like, how is that possible for him to sing in pain? I mean, sure, I'll give him props for him staying in character. Fast forward to them finding the dragon laying on the ground, whispering to find the witch's den that poisoned him to find the antidote. And the talking goose over there just confirms that there is the antidote at the witch's den. Like, you just give out an exposition dump. Like, it's nobody's problem. You're a goddamn doctor! The dragon's poison! You can cure any sickness! So if you're a goddamn doctor, why couldn't you just cure him already? I'm like, he's poisoned right over there, and he is literally going to die. Surely you can create an antidote. What kind of fucking doctor are you? Not to mention throughout the entirety of the story, there has never been a single thing that she did as a doctor. All she had ever done was talking, drinking tea, and stowing gold. That's it. She had absolutely nothing substantial being a doctor. The only people that did the majority of it was the dragon that literally carried everyone on his back. 
and then Geronimo Stilton, who has literally done everything. And at the time when Geronimo goes to the witch's hut for the antidote, the only thing his companions ever did was just give him a warning is that they eat fresh meat and the dark forest is a terrifying place. That's it! Absolutely nobody goes with him. They all decided to stay with the dragon and just push all the problems into Geronimo himself. He was literally crying and genuinely terrified. He ran across all the world in that terrifying forest, was about to get eaten by witches for just an antidote. Nobody goes with him and no words of encouragement. Some friends you got there being cold, heartless bastards. Oh, there also happens to be a Pegasus unicorn with rainbow wings that say Saved him near the end of the story and then just joined the team. Now, I'm pretty sure nobody cares about him because he only appears in like two pages. Like I honestly do not get why the last member of the team just joins at the near conclusion of the story. Why would they be included in the team? They'd be better putting off as side characters. Despite being the kingdom of fantasy that I first own, I guess I didn't pay too much attention to it since I was a bit young at the time. But now looking back at it, I was like, man, this book kind of sucks. The first and third book I read was better than the second. The second book feels like it was a complete waste of time for him to risk his life finding the heart and survive through sheer fucking plot armor to at the end it just gets put back to where he found it it's such a stupid plot sure the lands are pretty and all but it just felt like that they go places to places that's it there's this one place called the land of gold where everything is all shiny and stuff for the longest time there was a thing that there were no animals at first i still didn't get it after reading this but now i realized is that all the foods are inedible and you can't even physically eat it. I honestly don't see the purpose of why they make it look like food if it's not edible. It's so stupid. There also happens to be a queen in the land of gold, yet nobody lives there. So why would there be a queen? She'd be better off as a standing pedestal. He even said that we battled ogres. No, there was no we. There was only you. And you did not battle an ogre. You ran away from an ogre. You didn't do shit. But yeah, this has been Nexos. Case in point, Quest for Paradise sucks. Goodbye.